I've always been fascinated by technology. My first word as a child was light. And I've used computers since the Commodore VIC-20 that I can barely remember, all the way to the quad-core machines of today. During high school, I created several multimedia projects using Caligari TrueSpace and LightWave 3D, along with Adobe Premiere. Um, one of these was a presentation on Thailand where I created a 3D model of the country using gradients from an altitude map. Uh, I provided a link to that if you'd like to check it out. I also made five increasingly complex episodes of a series called Stick Figure Man, and which, to which I've provided links as well. Be warned, though, they're not for the squeamish. Um, you could call them dark comedy. I had an interesting sense of humor in high school. After graduating, I worked for Warren Miller Entertainment, the film company, for nine months. I worked in the dub room, copying tapes and editing video, which was a great experience. I began my undergrad at the University of Colorado Boulder, where I studied photography. My favorite technique was long exposures in the night or evening, where I'd leave the shutter open for between 1 and 30 seconds and let the CCD soak in light. I liked that because you could get images that you can't see with the naked eye. For a Photoshop class at the university, I tried to bring home the reality of the Iraq War by combining war imagery with photos from around CU campus. So I walked around and took hundreds of photos and then looked through hundreds of war images and then figured out what would fit where and combined them in Photoshop. Um, a local newspaper actually ended up picking them up and did a cover story on them. During my junior year at the University of Colorado, I studied abroad in Chile, which is where I became fluent in Spanish. Um, Chile is an amazing country with awesome wine, many beautiful places. After I got back from Chile, I finished my degree, and then in 2006, I acquired a teaching license through a teacher-in-residence program and began teaching Spanish at Wheat Ridge High School. It's a great place. The kids are awesome, and so are my coworkers. In 2008, we began acquiring smart boards, and my reputation for tech experience landed me one of the first ones. I began creating pages in the accompanying smart notebook software, and the page collections that I have built over the last three years are probably my most significant artifact that I have to show here, although they weren't created in EdTech. I'd like to take a couple minutes now to show you some of the work that I've done with the smart board. The screen shade tool is something that I'll use on a regular basis to review vocabulary that we've covered. Matamoscas, or fly swatter, is a fun game that we'll use to practice vocabulary. Corn. Maiz. Here's an activity that I made where students race against a clock to create sentences by dragging word components from the word bank above. We drink orange juice. Go. This is so cool. What's the sentence? We drink orange juice. You go date a run hot. Okay, really? Close, but not quite. Bebe, it's not an air verb. I enrolled in this EdTech program in 2009 with the primary motivation of moving up on the salary schedule since pay is tied to education credits in the public education system. Nonetheless, I was, I was intent on finding a program that wouldn't be complete BS because at least based on the conversations I have had, I'd say many if not most online higher education programs are useless. Overall, I've been very satisfied with what I've found in this EdTech program. I'd say the BS level is well under 25%, which is really quite impressive. I'd like to take a few minutes now to show you some of the most interesting artifacts that I've created in this program. With this digital instructional unit from EdTech 506, I had the opportunity to create a graphic aid for a travel unit that I had wanted to teach for quite some time, one focused on preparing students for the most common travel situations that they might find themselves in, less emphasis on grammar, more emphasis on vocabulary. So on the introduction page, there's a link to download a vocab list. This list was created by students a couple years ago where I had them brainstorm the most important words that they would want to know if they were to travel. So it was as many as we could fit on one double-sided sheet of paper and it's got the most basic verbs like to go, to have, to need, to help, and nouns like passport, airport, etc. 
So using this list, students proceed through these different phases of the unit. First would be catching a taxi. So I play the taxi driver and students try to catch a cab without being ripped off. Finding a bed at a hostel, asking for directions, riding the bus, ordering food, handling situations with beggars and gypsies, making travel reservations, and meeting one's medical needs. Right now we're in the catching a taxi phase at school. I'll show you a little video of what that looks like. No, no. 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 No, in EdTech 541, I created a tutorial for the Rosetta Stone Shared Talk website. Shared Talk is an amazing tool for language instruction. It essentially allows for real time voice and text chat with native speakers of any language you're looking to learn, more or less. So you create an account, you sign in. And once you're in, you click on text chat. I actually haven't used voice chat before. I'm a little hesitant to do that with students at this point. But you click on text chat. You click on chat now. And you're brought to a list of all the different people online at this point. So you can see up here there's 462 members online now. If I click here, I can sort by native language, scroll down to Spanish, and I can see all these different people online who speak Spanish right now. I find someone who's practicing the English language, Ruben Dario. I'm going to click on him, and then I can click chat, and that will invite him to a private chat window. Oh, look, someone's already invited me to chat with them. So if I hit accept, I can say, hola, como estas? and they'll start chatting with me on here. Um, this has been a great tool because it's one of the only times that students have an opportunity to interact one-on-one -on -one with native speakers of another language. An example of something that I created in EdTech that I use regularly in my work environment is the proferpaco.com website that I built for students to access class resources. So along the left hand side it's divided into three categories, Spanish 1, Spanish 2, and Spanish 3, and they can click on a chapter or a subject idea within each one and find all these different files that they can download either in the library or at home and print out. And then down beneath that there's a section that has links to a bunch of different resources. Whenever I find a good web 2.0 resource that uh, would be fun to use in class, I add that to the website, like Blabberize, Do Inc, Live Mocha, Prezi, etc. So this has been a good resource for both the students and for me. What I have here is an example of information management. This is a program called Total Commander. It was inspired by Norton Commander back in the days of DOS. And it's a two-panel file shell that allows you to move around and manipulate files very quickly. It's much faster than Windows Explorer because you can use the keyboard to do basically everything. So I can switch between panes using Tab, and I can enter files and folders by hitting Enter. Um, so I'll show you a couple of the features that make this program so useful. I'll begin by navigating to my flash drive. I bring that up in this pane. I'm going to go School Files, Lesson Plan Preparation, Spanish 2, Chapter 3A. So I've got all these files here. I can see the number of files and the total size in the lower left corner here. Um, I'm going to create a temp folder in the other pane. And now say I want to share some of these files with students, but just the PDF files. So I'll hit plus for wildcard selection, star dot PDF. And you see all those selected now. I can copy those over just using F5. I'm going to match these two panes, and I can see I have all these PDF files now. They're a little too long to want to share on a website, though. So I'm going to select all files, and then I'm going to use the multi-rename tool. And I'm going to replace the whole file name with just Spanish 2 3A resources. And I'm going to add a counter to number them, and make it a two-digit counter so it's 0, 1 instead of 1, etc. And hit Start and all these files have now been renamed. They have space characters in them though, which might not be ideal for uploading. So I'm going to select them all again. Go to the multi-rename tool once more. And I'm going to do a search. Use the search and replace to search for space and replace with underscore. And that's more like it. So that's a very useful feature for preparing multiple files for use online. And maybe I don't want to upload them all individually though. So I'm going to create a new temp folder. Select them all and use pack. I can choose any kind of archive format basically that exists. I'm going to use zip because it's the most common. 
click OK, and now I have a file over here, a zip file. I'm going to rename it to Chapter 3A Resources. And I can enter the zip file just as though it were a folder and see everything inside, including manipulating the files inside. So say I want to delete some, those are actually gone from the zip file now. I'm going to use the multi-rename again to replace those spaces with underscores. And now I'm going to use the built-in FTP capability of Total Commander. So I click Connect, Connect to EdTech Server. And you can see everything I've got going on on my EdTech server. Um, for sake of example, I'll just create a temp folder. And to upload a file, I just hit copy. Just as I would copy from one folder to another, I'm now copying to my EdTech server. To download a file, you just simply copy back to your hard drive. All of the functionality I have within Total Commander I can use on the I can use via FTP. So I can multi-rename, etc. Another thing I've got here, I'm going to disconnect, is a directory synchronization tool. So I'm going to go to my flash drive, and in the other pane, I'm going to go to a backup I have of my flash drive from January. And if I hit Commands, Synchronize DIRs, Compare, I can now see everything that's identical between the two folders, everything that would need to move from left to right to synchronize or right to left. This program's got a lot more functionality that I won't go into right now, but if you're interested, go to Google, type in Total Commander, it's the first link. It's by Geisler. And this program is shareware. It's totally free. Um, if you pay $10, you can remove the splash screen at the beginning. Um, it's a real powerful utility, though. So if you're someone who spends a lot of time trying to keep your digital world organized, I highly recommend it. The ebook that I created in EdTech 541 is a project that I had a lot of fun with and spent a lot of time on. It's called La Aventura de Brio, The Adventure of Brio, the Little Glowing One. Brio is a glowing zebrafish who lives in Crown Hill Lake, which is the lake near Wheat Ridge High School. And there are always students standing on the edge of the lake, smoking cigarettes and throwing their trash in the water. So Brio's favorite food are the fiery hot Cheetos that the students throw onto the bottom of the lake. Brio doesn't know why he glows so much. He thinks it's because of those fiery hot Cheetos he's always eating. But the truth is, is that he was the experiment of an evil scientist who crossed naturally bioluminescent jellyfish DNA with a zebrafish to make a glowing zebrafish. In any case, he wants to meet some other fish like him, because he doesn't know any others that glow like he does. So he grabs his bag and decides to go on a trip to the other side of the lake. He doesn't know how to get there, so he asks directions from an old fish that he meets along the way. He asks, excuse me, sir, do you know how to get to the other side of the lake? And the old fish says, well, no, but I can find out. And he takes out his iPhone. The old fish shows him the screen and reads him some directions. He says, go straight for 10 meters, then turn right, go straight for 20 more meters. And Brio asks, meters? 10 meters? How far is 10 meters? So the old fish explains what 10 meters is in the imperial system. So hopefully students learn a little bit about converting between imperial and metric. So Brio follows the old fish's instructions. And finally, he arrives at this old stump at the end of the lake, where he sees all sorts of other fish that look like him. And he says, finally, I have a family. And he lives happily ever after. The final artifact that I'd like to show you is a flash-based game that isn't quite finished at the time of the filming of this video, but I can give you some idea of what it will look like. The game is called Teclauto, which is a combination of the Spanish word teclado, which means keyboard, and auto, which means car, so keyboard car. The main menu takes you here, where you have contact information, a set of vocab hints that will help you complete this game successfully, and a set of instructions. So the way the game works is a map of the Wheat Ridge area is displayed on the screen, with a car here and a highlighted route that shows where the car is going. The red areas delineate action points, during which students must type a command that corresponds to what the car will do. So when the car gets to that first red area, the student will need to type dobla a la derecha, which means turn right. If they do that while the car is still on the red area, they get some points. So 100 points are rewarded. So they continue. Later, they'll get up to this bridge. If they type pasa por el puente, go over the bridge, they'll earn more points. And the game ends when they get to this fiesta over by the lake. They get there, they type llega a la fiesta, and they earn more points. So the idea is to have as many points as possible at the end of the game. To show you a rough draft of what the animation will look like, I'll hit the play button. That's all I have so far, but please check out the finished product soon. I'll provide a link under the artifacts section of my ePortfolio website. 
So this gives you an idea of who I am, how I got here, and about my experience in this EdTech program. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions or if you're interested in collaborating on something.